Hello and welcome to Truth vs. Hype. The return of Abu Jundal is an opportunity to refocus attention on a forgotten but no less important chapter of homegrown terrorism, the Indian Mujahideen. Dozens of them arrested for being members of the group after a wave of bombings that rocked India four years ago. This week, we investigate the risks of first labeling hundreds of men as members of India's biggest terror collective and then consigning them to the dustbin of the Indian legal system. From the time when they announced their arrival with a self-descriptive email sent after a series of blasts targeting courts in UP in November 2007, the Indian Mujahideen remained untraceable by the police as they claimed responsibility for a series of bloody attacks on Indian cities through 2008. The timing of their emails sent moments before or just after the blast giving credence to their claim. The first claims of a breakthrough came in August of 2008 when the Ahmedabad police made a series of arrests from UP and Gujarat, mostly of ex-members of the banned Students Islamic Movement of India and said they had cracked the network that carried out the blast. Students Islamic Movement of India, नाम की जो बैंड संस्था है, उस संस्था के कहीं ना कहीं सक्रिय कार्यकर हैं और इन लोग का इसमें खूब ही कहना चाहिए कि इन्वॉल्वमेंट है, इनका डीप इन्वॉल्वमेंट है. Soon after, the Mumbai police arrested 21 men. They went a step further and said this was the Indian Mujahideen, not just behind Ahmedabad but also UP, Jaipur, Delhi and more. The leads from Ahmedabad and Mumbai were passed on to the Delhi police, which led them to Batla House and that infamous encounter, where of the two men killed, one was described as a key IM member. Atif Amin, a young student. Based on these arrests, the contours of the Indian Mujahideen started to take shape. A group formed in late 2007 with the core conspiracy hatched by criminal turned jihadist Riyaz Bhatkal, his brother Iqbal, and their associate Yasin, all from Mangalore. The bombs were assembled and planted by Atif Amin and what is known as the Delhi Module. The emails were sent by young techies from Pune, led by Mansoor Peerboy, a former Yahoo engineer who drafted the mails. It was a loose network of individuals uh, who broke away from the students' Islamic movement because they thought it was inadequately radical or inadequately action-oriented. Um, this, this was really a brand name. The two police forces broadly agreed on this, but differed on who was the number two in the IM after the Bhatkals. The Bombay police felt it was an engineer from Azamgarh, Sadiq Sheikh, who lived in the slums of Mumbai. I will be able to speak about our case. Huh. And our case clearly says that this, you know, the, the, the Sadiq was the original mastermind. As a part of the evidence. While the Ahmedabad police emphasized the role of former members of Simi. So in your view, who would be the main mastermind or the main brains behind the Ahmedabad blast? Main would again be Riyaz Bhatkal, Iqbal Bhatkal, Yasin Bhatkal, Taukir. They are still absconders. The one who have been arrested, they include Kayamuddin Kapadia, Abu Pashar, Safdar Nagori, these all these the people. Chairs. Yes. Those revelations led to a sweeping series of arrests from across the country by police forces acting independently or in tandem. The net result, approximately 150 men housed in prisons across seven states, of which Sabarmati Prison here in Ahmedabad houses the largest number, 70 accused. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.